Oh, turn that light off. Oh, yeah, that's, that, that's uh, it's a heat. Yeah. Oh, It's a plant light. You got photosynthesis oh, going on. Sorry, photosynthesis. We're growing you, your body, hopefully. Uh, that's good. That's good. I mean, it's okay. For me, it's right. others one. Yeah. No problem. Okay. Sorry. So they still have their Just to let the place. That's right. Oh, right. Hey, tell me. I'm not taking it for a shot. Huh? Fasting here? Yeah, fasting. Oh, today? Yeah. They're probably doing a lot of cooking there. Fasting. Oh, I missed the kind issue yesterday. I'm sorry, guys. I should have. I just spaced out. I totally spaced out. We do have some. I thought yesterday was Thursday. Oh gosh, mm. I feel bad about this. Huh? Nothing, nothing to feel bad. Okay. So, she Bajan Mahasya. I spoke this last time I was here. Anybody remember? You remember anything? I remember you spoke. Uh, you remember, remember anything? You remember? She Bajan Mahasya. So the Bhakti Mota That Shri Bhakti Mota and Shri Bhakti Siddhanta from Pad, there in which island in Navadu? Where did they stay? Anybody know? Where did they stay when they lived in Navadu? Bodrum. Mm. Oh. They stayed in Bodrum. And there, Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada, he was doing editing work for Shri Bhakti Vinod Thakur and observing and catching his moods. And he explained that Shri Bhakti Vinod Thakur would be up in the middle of the night when everybody was sleeping, absorbed. In taking shelter, Harinam, and going deep into his bhajan. Mm. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada, he explains that there's Archan and there's bhajan. Anybody remember this? So it's okay that I repeat the things. I'm going to go over quickly. Mm. There's Archan and there's bhajan. Archan is one of the nine limbs of devotional service, which is worshipping the Lord. And bhajan, bhajate, is the full, means full worship. But there's a distinction that's made between archan and bhajan. That archan, being a part of bhajan, and that archan is done is a, is a word which is referring to those devotees' practice who are still in the bodily conception of life. That we are thinking that I am American, from Ecuador, wherever. I am thinking that I am this body. That person is still within the realm of bhajan. And until, Archon. sorry, Archan, <laughs> that's good, you're listening, very good. That they're within the realm of Archan, and until we give up the bodily conception that I am this body, I am Nigerian, I'm African American, I'm Ecuadorian, I'm American, until we give up this bodily conception and those things which go with the bodily conception, the attachment to these cultures. 
and then we start to strive that I want that other culture, that transcendental culture, Goloka culture, until we start to really strive for that and give up this lower culture, we can never move from the platform of Archan to the realm of Bhajan. The Bhajan, the doors open for those who give up this concept of, a, of the body and attachment to the body and all the ramifications that go with that. Then for them, the door to Bhajan is open. So, Srila Bhakti, you know, Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada said that 95% of the devotees are in the realm of Arjuna. 95%, maybe. I can't remember. I haven't reviewed my notes. I was just telling you I haven't looked at my notes for a long time. Anyway, so 95% are still in the realm of Arjuna. So maybe we're included in that, huh? So this Sri Bhajan Rahasya, how we can go from the realm of Bhajan, Archan, to the realm of Bhajan. But we should see, have we, ever, have we even entered into the realm of Archan? Mm -hmm. Have we even entered into the realm of Archan? We should. This is the beginning stage. One time, Somebody made a comment about Srila Bhakti from Oparimaraj. Said that he's always doing deity worship. That he's just a neophyte devotee. He's a Kanishta. He's a beginner. The devotees were very hurt. Mm -hmm. And they went and they told Srila Purimaraj. And Srila Purimaraj said, Hari Bol! Hari Bol! So finally, I've entered into <laughs> Bhakti. I've become a Kanishta. Finally, I've become a Kanishta. Wow! Like this, you should give up pride and cultivate humility. I'm speaking for my benefit, because I'm such a proud person. Nothing to be proud about, but very proud. We have to give up pride and cultivate this mood of humility. So, So the first, so in the, the introduction, then, to even really enter into the mood of Archan, then we should begin to embrace the concept of surrender, the concept of surrender, Sharanagati. Sharanagati, there's six limbs of Sharanagati, Anukulyasa Sankalpa, Pratikulyasa Bhajanam, Rakshish Titi Vishwasho, Gopriti Bhajanam. Atman nitipa kalpanye sabbitam sharanagati. That what is favorable for our bhakti, we should accept. What is unfavorable, we should reject. So, what is favorable, good association. What is unfavorable, asatsang, bad association. We should accept what is favorable, we should reject what is unfavorable. But, this taking association and rejecting that association, it means that really in the heart, in the heart, if we're always hankering for good association, and in that hankering for good association, we're taking association in separation. We may have association with somebody who's present there, very advanced Vaishnava or Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis. But even in separation, that we're always remembering, praying to them, crying out to them, then that type of association is also Vaishnav Seva, is service to Vaishnavas. And that is the root of Bhakti. 
Krishna Bhakti Mo Hoy Sadhu Sangha. The root of Bhakti is Sadhu Sangha. And the Sadhu Sangha is Seva to Sadhus. Just remembering Sadhus, this is Sadhu Sangha. And this is Seva. Just remembering them. Remembering their qualities. Remembering their activities. Remembering their instructions. And emulating their qualities. Following out their instructions. This is all service to Sadhus. And this, it saves us from a satsang, from bad association. Because if we're always remembering Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada, Srila Gurudev, and their qualities, their pastimes, their activities, their instructions, and taking it to heart, then we set a mark in our life. Because by that association, you can tell where somebody is at by the association. So by this, that association, you set a mark. And that helps you to cultivate humility because their qualifications are so super excellent that in relation to that, that we cannot be but feel, oh my, I am very full. But that humility is very good. That humility is very good. Because we've set a mark. Because they have achieved that position for which we have come to bhakti for. We've come for something. We've come to be in the same transcendental position as Srila Gurudev. It is not being proud. It is not being mad to think that I want to be like him. We pray, let me be as you are. In every day, Gurudev, Kripa Benudir, the last verse, last line. Please, let me be as you are. Means, let me come to that transcendental position. So we should always be doing sadhu sangha. Always remembering the sadhus. Then remembering the sadhus, what is their instruction? Associate with Jive sadhus. Jivedoya Krishna Nam. Yes, you do association. You do association. But in that association, then they give us instruction that we must do sudden. That association is so powerful that just by association, everything can come. We can achieve all perfection. Parichit Maharaj, he achieved all perfection by hearing. Right? Just by hearing. But you know, we're not Parikshit Maharaj. Mm -hmm. huh? In the womb. We're not Parikshit Maharaj. So, we have to hear, and then we have to engage in Southern Bhakti. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he came and he showed what is the path. In Godavari, he went to hear from Roy Ramananda, who is Vishaka. And then he heard. But then after hearing, what did he do? He went to Jagannath Puri, to Gandhira, and then he did sadhana based on what he heard. We follow Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He comes, he is our guru. What he has said, what he has done, we follow that path. Exclusively. So he showed that you hear but then you go and you do sadhana. Just hearing, hearing, hearing for conditioned soul, Balaji, in Kali Yu, must do sadhana. And of that sadhana, Nam Kirtan. All scriptures say, all scriptures say, this is direct, it's there, black and white. When people try and like this and like that. Anyway, so, By that sadhana, then the sambanda says sambanda nahija vritta janma gelota. One who has not developed sambanda with Nityananda Prabhu and his associates, vritta janma gelota. What is the use of human life? Say pashu bodha duracha. Man is just 
no better than an animal. So, but by hearing and then going and doing sadhana, then the sadhus, Nityananda Prabhu say, oh, that person has really heard. Because what is the fruit of hearing? That you go and practice. You go and practice. Then their mercy flows. You don't have to ask for mercy. Their mercy flows to you immediately, automatically. And the more you engage in that practice, by which they know will give you the supreme perfection, then the more the sambandha with sadhus it thickens. They say, oh, this person is really my family member. This person is really with me. Say sambandha. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Mm. Do what's favorable. Sadhu Sanda. So Sri Prabhupada, Bhaktivedanta Prabhupada, he's giving that we should do Sharanagati. And what is favorable? Sadhu Sanda. Unfavorable? Avoid a Sadhu Sanda. That there's paramatic and vyavaharic. Paramatic means deeply, spiritually, and vyavaharic means superficially. That in the beginning we'll think that to take association and to reject association will take it in a superficial way. That, oh, I should not be with this person, I should not be with that person. But actually, it's not even practical for somebody who is in, in, in the society. You see? For somebody who is in the society, it's not practical. Because in the society, you have to mix with so many people. So, one should take it in the paramatic, transcendental sense. That in my heart, I should always be yearning. For Srila Bhakti no Thakur's mercy and instructions. To understand what are the instructions of Srila Gurudev so that I can actually apply and follow to understand what is the mercy and follow Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Then, when we're walking in the world, gradually we become more and more absorbed in that Sadhu Sangha that. One thing is we don't deal so much with association of materialistic people and then after some time we don't even have time to deal with materialistic people. But first What's going on? What's going on? I'm transmitting it. Did you say put it here in the live video? I have restarted. Oh. Do they want to put it right there? Yeah, I could. I need to plug it in though. Oh, are you doing the live video? It's a video. Oh. Okay. On the call? Oh, that's what the call is about. I think it's okay now. Don't make that. So I've told before the story of the monkey and the turtle, right? I'm not going to say again. You don't remember? <laughs> no, nah, good memory. That is me. Do you remember? You'd like to hear? Okay, quickly. I wanted to go through the first two chapters of Latin Rahasya. <laughs> I haven't even started the first verse. Okay. So, one monkey, quickly, all those listening, they've heard, wanted to cross the river. The monkey was in Godrum, that island I'm talking about, and wanted to go across the Jalangi to Mayapur. And so, one turtle came and said, look, you hop on my back, I take you over. Turtle, turtle, as well. Monkey said, no, you eat me. 
He said, no, I've already had my meal. And went back and forth. Finally, the monkey said, okay. With the holy down, I'll trust you. And then, started to go across. Then, turtle turned back in the middle and said, you know what? I didn't have my dessert. Huh? <laughs> and then the monkey said, oh my God. What's happening? Oh God, only time. Save me. So then, the tiger gave him intelligence. He said, look, oh, Mr. Turtle, or Turtoise, whatever, that you can have the most sweetest thing, very juicy, very red, sweet. Turtoise, start, mouth start to water, tears start to flow from the eyes. He said, please, give it to me. He said, I'll give it to you. He said, but what is it? What is it, you know? Ah. My heart, very red, juicy, sweet, succulent. But there's only one thing. Yeah. My yeah. heart's not here. I left it in my tree house, back in Gojo. <laughs> <laughs> <Huh? laughs> oh, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Left it in my tree house. And there in Gojo, all the living entities, they're only vibrating one sound vibration. Go ra, 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 Jai Satchinandana, Jai Agora Hai, Satchimata Pramadana Nadi Nadi This is Godro, the best place in the lower, middle, upper, translated world, Godro. So then, Turtle became stupid and said, okay, I'll trust you. Turned around, took him back, and then Monkey hopped up, said, see you later, alligator. In a very long while. Was it like a turtle or an alligator? <laughs> oh, yeah, it was an alligator. Yeah. It was an alligator, yeah? Memory. Mm -hmm. Was it an alligator? Yeah, it was an alligator. So, so, See you later, yeah. all, alligator and a wild crocodile. Yeah, yeah. So then, what is the teaching? That when you go in the world, your heart should be in Godrum. Your heart should be in the spiritual world. Your heart should be with Lord Nityananda. Your heart should be with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And even if around you are so many materialistic things, that your heart should not be there. So this is Anukul Yasya, accepting what's favorable. Always being in Sadhu Sangha. Always being in the association of devotees. Even if the devotees are not physically there, being in the association. But also hankering that when I can have that physical association, when I can have that physical association, because from that physical association is called Swarup Shakti, the transcendental potency of the Lord, by which we're able to come out of this prison house of material energy. They're carrying it. They can release. But we need to come in contact with that more and more. And the more we come in contact, then, and we follow instructions, then the more we become free from the influence of mind. Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sri Ramaj, he spoke very nicely. He said, that these associates of Lord Nityananda, that they're carrying transcendental sound vibration. And that when this transcendental sound vibration, Shabda Brahm, it comes from their lips. Then it enters into the ear of the conditioned soul, of the devotee who's hearing. And it dances in the eardrum. He said, half liquid, half air. And then it enters and it goes to the mind. And it starts uh, what? Turning. Turning uh, in physics, what is it? Some kind of. Transformation. Okay. Movement. Transformation movement within the mind. And then it goes to the intellect. And then the mind and the intellect. Start to ponder not the things of this world, 
But the mind and the intellect now start to ponder the sweetness of the soul and the Lord, the sweetness of bhakti, the process of bhakti. He said, but still, it's not spiritual. It's not transcendental. Then, that devotee who is chanting, hearing, and chanting, then the influence of that transcendental Shabda Brahm, which is coming from the Swarup Shakti Karya, the pure devotee, makes his way beyond the mind to the intellect. And what is the soul? The soul, in the conditioned soul, is, Shudamar says, in an inanimate, in a suspended position. Suspended. And the mind, which is by medium between spirit and matter, is moving the body. But the soul is so powerful that though the soul is in a suspended, animated position, from that soul consciousness is spread throughout the body. But all these different ponderings and thoughts and feelings and elations which are coming to the mind and the intellect while chanting Hare Krishna in the association of pure devotees. But it's not transcendental. But the working of that Shudanam which is coming from the lips of the pure devotee meanders through the alleyway canals of the mind, intellect and then now comes and touches the soul. And then what happens? Then that soul reverberates. Hare Krishna. Huh? And now the contact has been made from transcendence to the soul. And then he says, and then there's a reverse, inverted process of now that transcendental substance coming from the Atma to the intellect. And now the intellect is being flooded with transcendental thought and the mind. And then it comes out on the lips, Hare Krishna. And then with that Hare Krishna, then so many anubhavs come. One starts to dance. Tears flow from the eyes. Peripolation uh, of the body due to the presence of transcendent transcendence uh, in the inner part now is manifesting on the outer part. So, this comes from Sadhu Sangha. We are totally dependent on Sadhu Sangha. Without Sadhu Sangha, then our life is wasted. We cannot achieve the goal of life. Can't say totally wasted because even if one is chanting without Sadhu Sangha, then there's Sukriti. There's Sukriti. But without that transcendental Nam coming, then millions of names may be chanted, but it will not have effect on the Atma. It is that transcendental sound that comes from the pure devotee and devotees that makes its way. And how? By our practice of sadhana. Our practice of sadhana. So the more we take to the shelter process of sadhana, then the more we'll get the mercy of that transcendental sound more quickly making its way and making contact with us and then manifesting on the mind, intellect, and then the gross senses. So, anukulyasa sankalpa, to accept what's favorable and to reject what's favorable means that... Huh? <laughs> unfavorable, means that that expedites that process of bhakti. To accept the Lord as one's protector and maintainer. It's said that this protecting the Lord as one's maintainer is the, is the main limb of surrender. And everything else is a sub-limb. That when we come and we offer ourselves to Guru and to Krishna, that I'm offering myself to you I am giving my body, my mind, words to you. I am taking the process of do or die. Surrender means do or die. Then, whatever happens is under the jurisdiction of the Lord and pure devotee, Guru. So then the, 
devotee understands that you are my maintainer. That if by my decision I am going to go and be killed, I accept. Because whatever you, whatever you do, you are maintaining me. It's not my body, it's your body. Whatever happens, I accept. But, if I be killed, at least, in my next birth, let me have Sadhusanda. Only thing. I don't mind to die, because I'm going to die anyway. Anybody here not, body not going to die? No, everybody's going to die. So at least, Prem Dan Vina Vyata Darida Jivan. That's a Kore Veta More. They hope Prem Dan. That whatever service I've done, then I only ask one thing. Give me Krishna Prem. Means give me Sadhu Sunday. So Krishna's maintainer. This is main thing. That in whatever we do, I was just talking with Neil Mother, that nowadays, nowadays in the um, kind of new age psychology, and it's it's a good thing to understand acceptance. You know, that a lot of times we're in denial about so many things. So me also, but what's the main thing? To accept the Lord as our maintainer. When we accept the Lord as our maintainer, then automatically, then the channel opens for mercy. And when that transcendental mercy comes, then all material inhibitors automatically, they're taken care of. But that is a deep process. It's a deep process. And it requires deep sadhana. But that's what our Guru has come for. Just yesterday, Bhumi Patik was telling me that one time Guru Dev was sitting on the Vyasa sand and he was speaking. And then Guru Dev, he started to cry. He said, please, you take what I've come to give. Don't let me waste my time coming out here. That I've left Vrindavan, I've come, come here under so much duress, inconvenience. Please, you take what I've come so the sadhus have come to give this. Jive doya, Krishna nam, sava shastra, sa, the essence. So then, taking shelter of Sharanagati, then Srila Bhakti Nota, we're speaking again, Sri Bhajan Mahasya. You were here when I spoke before. Do you remember something? Yeah, Bhajan Mahasya, you yeah. spoke in Richmond Hill. Yes. Um, Richmond Hill. Outside. Yeah, and I spoke also in Jersey. You didn't come. You were not in Jersey. Yeah. So first verse, Krishna Vanam Tusha Krishna Sangha Pagasa Parashadam Yeah, guy Sangha Tap Prayi. You janti he's who made the sah. Huh? You janti he's who made the sah. You janti he's who made the sah. But Shila Bhakti No Thakur, he presents a different last line. Bajami Kali Pavanam. Bajami. Let me do bhajan to that person who's Kali Yuga Pavanam, who's the deliverer in Kali Yuga, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is the essence of this book, how to enter into bhajan in Kali Yuga, in Kali Yuga. And what, what process is being highlighted? Nam. Nam is being highlighted. Krishna Banam Tisha Krishna Sangu Pangasta. That Krishna, he's now appearing in a Akrishna, in a form which is not Sham, but which is Gaur, Gold. Sangu Pangasta Parshadam, along with his associates, Angas, Nityananda Prabhu. Astra, his weapon in Kali Yuga. What is the weapon in Kali Yuga? Harinam Sankirtan. Harinam Sankirtan. Parishas, associates coming from Goloka Vrindavan, means Radharani, Lalita, Vishaka, these Parishas, this led by Gadara Pandit, who's Radharani, whose appearance day is day after tomorrow. Yagyai Sankirtan Prayi. Is it Tuesday? 
I think I think it's Monday. Yeah. Okay. Monday New York. Monday New York. And he's performing Sankirtan, congregational chanting. But Sankirtan also means Sat sa, sa, Bobena Kirtan. That Kirtan which is done with Sambandha Gyan, with relationship, free from an artist. This is Sankirtan. Bajami Kali Pavanam. That I worship him. Who is the deliverer in Kali Yuga? So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is that same Krishna, but with the mood and the complexion of Radharani. So, That beauty of Krishna and Radha combined, that is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So then Radha Mohan, he has sung very nicely. If you can look in your song books, Sake. Sake. Kalaya Gora Buddha Sake Kalaya Gora Kalaya Gora Buddha Mara <laughs> 